Hey everybody, it's Robin Scherzer with Robin Stampin' Hood. Welcome to the hood and welcome to technique series number five. I've been doing a technique series for the last, um, well this will be the fifth month, uh, doing four techniques for my peeps and some of them could not be with me so I'm making this video and um, you are the beneficiary of it as well. So this first technique is called faux wood and oh my goodness, using your glass mat is definitely the way to go and I'll show you why in a second. But I'm just using crumb cake and you could use any kind of dark color. This is a, or a, a wood color I should say. Um, this is, I was experimenting with it, the, this and I'll show you the different things that I came up with. But I'm using crumb cake ink and then the crumb cake paper. And I just want you to be really light on it. Now, with our new foam pads that we came out with a few, year, a few years ago, they're very different from our linen pads. So they have a little bit more ink on them. So you just have to kind of experiment and make sure that you're not doing it real heavy handed. So I'm just going to lightly go across my paper. So you see how I just, and that's exactly how I want it to look. And then I'm going, and I'm going to try to start off of my paper on this time. Again, I'm just going to be very light. Ooh, probably too light. We're going to try that again. Very light handed. I'm creating, I wanted to create these, um, uh, these lines, like it's a fence. Okay. So, or a wood, or wood. So I'm going to do it again. I just flipped it over. I'm going to try to not be quite is light and that's probably a little too heavy handed but you can see the difference then there we go as you're getting the grains quote unquote of the wood um and then i'm just gonna do this end piece so it doesn't look so so there you go you have some wood now let me show you this is why i love the glass mat of course is because now i can just wipe my ink away and i don't have to worry about it and if i needed more ink I could use that too, and I'm just gonna use a paper towel to dry that off so we can use it right away again. So this is with the crumb cake, and let me show you, this is with, I used um, pecan pie. So you can see my different lines of delineation. So this one probably I needed to have a little bit heavier hand in the middle, and this was probably too much of a heavy hand. So you can see the difference there, but you can play with different, like I said, this is pecan pie on crumb cake, and this is crumb cake on crumb cake. So you could try um, crumb cake with uh, the Early Espresso. You could try crumb cake with any kind of um, like brownish color and it should work depending on how dark you want it. And this is a great background for um, any outdoor scenes that you might have or masculine cards or anything like that. So this is called the faux wood technique. On to the next technique. Okay, this second technique is called um, masking background. It is super easy to do, and you can use it using our stamping, um, Stampin' Up! masking paper, but I will caution you for this. So um, here's our paper, and I'm gonna punch it out real quick here. Um, I'm using, um, oh, actually, you know what? I wanna use the bigger one. I'm gonna use the one and three quarters, and I'm gonna pull the sticker off the back of this. Now this is probably the hardest part is pulling the sticker off. So when you get the sticker off, you're gonna, obviously this is your protective piece. It is pretty sticky. So what I recommend is to um, put it down on your clothes. Like, you know, get a little lint on it to, I'm like tapping it on my pants right now. Um, just so it's not quite as sticky because sometimes then it's a little harder to get off. So you can see I have some lint on the back of it now. So it's a little too sticky for my taste. So we're gonna just go ahead and put it down like that. And I pulled out my color buddy sheet to kind of see what I wanted to use. So I'm gonna use these three colors, the lemon lime twist, the granny apple green, and the garden green. And again, this is called background masking. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and start with the lightest color, which is the Lemon Lime Twist. And we'll grab my little blending brush here. And again, this is another one of those things where this is great for the glass mat because you can start off here and I'm just gonna kind of go all around. I'm just giving it a little bit of color on the background. It doesn't have to be amazing. It's just to show the masking technique here, but you'll see what we're gonna do. So then I'm gonna grab my Granny Apple Green and I'm gonna do the same thing. Grab some color here. You can see the differences there and just start to kind of give it a little bit of color. All right. I know, you're saying what? I don't get it. Let's, well, actually we're gonna grab it from there. Look at that, I just picked up all that. Doing more along the edges with the granny apple green than anything. Okay, so that's all I'm doing there. And then I'm gonna come in with my garden green and I am going to take, so I'm using this stamp set layering leaves and I'm going to go ahead and just do some stamping along the edges here. And actually I'm gonna do that because we're masks so it doesn't matter. That's the beauty, the beauty about masking something. And then we'll do this. And I think that's good. I think I though, I'm gonna come back in with my Granny Apple Green and just give it a little bit more something, something. So let me do that. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more. There we go, you can see it's a little better there now. So I'll just do some spots. And it's just, I'm just messing around. You, the, you'll get the idea you know, once you do this. So I just wanted some darker color there. That's the only reason I did that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead then and grab our mask off of this. And I'm just gonna take my little pokey tool and poke under there. And carefully pull it off. Cause like I said, it does tend to be a little sticky. So definitely make sure that you put your lint from your clothes on it. So now we have that nice, beautiful circle. And I'm just gonna come in with the hello that's in the layering leaves. And I'm going to just stamp it right in the middle. Is that pretty or what, you guys? So simple, so easy, and that's called background masking. Okay, this third technique is called swiping. And it's actually where you are taking your ink pad and swiping it across your stamp. Um, I think you're gonna like it. I had never done this before and I got some really interesting uh, detail to it. So I'm gonna show you what I did. So I'm just taking my paper there and I'm using this set here, Painted Lavender. And I'm going to take my, start with my grape. It doesn't matter um, what you start with, but that's what I'm going to start with. So, you know, our we want to always do this, tap, tap, tap. But instead, we're going to swipe, swipe, swipe. So, put your <laughs> stamp in your hand. This is really hard for me because I always want to do it the other way. So, then you're just going to start off your stamp and swipe. And yes, you're going to get some of that and it's okay. So I'm going to stamp it. And it's giving you a different texture. You can kind of see, I probably was a little too heavy handed. So we're gonna try it again without being quite that heavy handed. I just love it, I think it looks awesome. So I'm gonna start off lightly and just, and now I didn't get anything. So we gotta be careful to make sure you're doing it on both sides of it. So we'll try that one more time, shall we? It's weird, like I said, and I just did that. So I'm not quite as heavy handed this time, which is probably better. And you can see the texture of the swiping a little bit better when you do it that way. Okay, so there's one. I just think it looks so good. And I'm gonna show you the difference between tap, tap, tap and doing this swiping technique. 
So we're gonna do that flower, and then I'm gonna come in with this other. Now this is a much lighter ink, it's the Highland Heather. Um, I suppose we can just do it this way too. I'm gonna do that one more time. And you can see there, it's very light. I prefer the darker purple, but you can see there's a little bit of texture on the stamp. We'll see if you can see that. There's a little bit of texture there. So, but I'm gonna stick with the darker. And then I'm gonna come in with my green, my granny apple green. And I think I am just gonna do it this way. It's easier because I can see it a little bit better. And it's gonna be the same thing. This one has, because it's so dark, you can see, look at there's some ink that is pooled up there. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean that real quick and then do it again, going maybe the opposite direction. And we'll see if we can get a nice. So you, again, you can see, I, this just gives, I really like this. I have never done this before. And I really like how it turned out. It's almost artsy, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, so that, I'm gonna let that dry because you can see, oh, but I already got my paw print on it. Um, you can see that it's very wet. So uh, this was my original, when I was just playing around like that, which you can see the difference there. But I wanna show you what it looks like if you just, I kinda did it here, but you can't really see it very well. So I'm gonna show you the difference between tap, tap, tap and swiping. It's very different. So we're gonna tap, tap, tap. Look at the difference. Very, very different from the swiping. So let me do the uh, other flowers so you can see that as well. Let's see, we'll use the gorgeous grape again because I want you to see the difference here. I actually might do some kind of card like that. So I'm just tap, tap, tapping and see, it's just very, now my ink pad is very, um, juicy, obviously, uh, but you can't see the detail almost like you can when you swipe it. So let's try, I'm gonna try it with the, the Highland Heather so you can see the difference here. Tap, tap, tap. See, very, very different. So I love this swiping technique. I might start doing that more often, huh? Uh, let's do the little flower just for grins and see what we got here. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah, very, very different than swipe, swipe, swipe. <laughs> so there you go, you guys. That's the swiping technique. Pretty cool. Okay, the last technique for this four of techniques is ribbon stamping. You guys, I know I have told you, take your blends, color your ribbon. Well, this is stamping on your ribbon. Now you do have to choose carefully what kind of ribbon you're gonna use. I'm gonna show you an example of what not to use. So uh, we have this beautiful satin ribbon that we're selling um, online. And you can see when I stamped it, it's all blurry and it's not very nice. I tried to do Merry Christmas on it, but you can see it just does not do what you would like it to do. So don't choose satin. Satin's a bad one to do. Now cotton is a great one. So I um, took some of our uh, beige. Let me see if I had a clean spot there. You can kind of see. So I took some of our basic beige and stamped a little flower on it and it's perfect. It doesn't smear, it's great. But I wanted to do one a little more sparkly, a little bigger. And so I chose this ribbon, which is definitely sparkly. And this is our iridescent ribbon in, in white. But I thought, you know what? I kinda wanna do a Christmas thing. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a real quick Christmas ribbon using um, these little berries that are in the um, the new, uh, uh, what's it called? It's a the greetings of the season, that bundle. Um, I can't think of the name right now, but 
you know what I mean. So I'm just gonna go along and stamp my red berries. Look at that, is that not pretty? I guess you don't need that paper there, do we? And then that. So then I'm gonna go ahead and clean it and I'm gonna come back with my shaded spruce and fill in in between the berries. You guys, look how pretty that is. And it's super simple. And if you wanted to do Merry Christmas, you could do Merry Christmas around there too. So I just love this. I, I didn't realize you could stamp on that ribbon and um, I haven't done ribbon stamping in years. So that's it, you guys. Really super pretty and easy. Let's see what kind of ribbon you can stamp. Thanks for stopping by and happy stamping.